This is David Nabarro speaking. I'm a member of the lead group for the movement to scale up nutrition. I'm also working for the World Health Organization as a special envoy for the response to the new COVID-19 outbreaks that are appearing all over the world. Together with Lawrence Haddad, a colleague with whom I won the World Food Prize in 2018, I've been really trying to draw attention to nutrition challenges that are occurring as a result of the virus and also as a result of responses to outbreaks that are being mounted all over the world. Lawrence and I are saying that millions of children are at risk from COVID-19, not so much from the disease itself, but also from the response. COVID-19 containment strategies must prioritize the nutrition of children in every nation. At this time, billions of people are staying put to reduce transmission of the virus because we know that physical distancing slows its spread. Hundreds of millions of people are without income and are struggling to make ends meet. Governments are trying to help them. Local organizations and non-governmental organizations are trying to support them. But the reality is that for many, nutritious food is beyond their means. Men, women and children are missing meals. Feeding centers have been closed too. And often, nutritious foods are just not available in local markets. And we know that this will lead to millions of malnourished children appearing. And we know also that malnourished children are five times more likely to die from diarrhea and other diseases. They're more likely to perform less well in school, more likely to be poor when they're adult, and they're more susceptible to diabetes, cancer, and heart failure later in life. So what is to be done? First, focus on the poor. A 10% contraction in a nation's gross domestic product means an extra 100 million, 180 million people plunged into poverty if this happens throughout the world. 85% of them will be living in Africa south of the Sahara, and also they'll be in South Asia, and in Latin America too. As many as 150 million will be hungry. Governments need to do all they can to ensure food and income support for the vulnerable. Second, prevent hunger. Deliver school feeding outside of the school. Distribute food without congregation at distribution points. Set up cash transfers for those below the poverty line. Provide relief to those who have lost their income. Prioritize the needs of those in essential roles, including health and food systems. Focus on sufficient nutritious food for all. Prioritize women and children. And don't forget older, children, older people and those with special needs. Thirdly, promote nutrition. Focus on pregnant women and children under five. Promote breastfeeding. Provide vitamin and mineral supplements. Sustain mother and child health care. Treat those with malnutrition and diarrhea, leaving no one behind. Fourthly, support farmers and food system workers. Reach small folder farmers and help them access essential inputs like seeds and fertilizers. Offer bridging credit and working capital to prevent them from becoming distressed with debt. Ensure food system workers are properly protected as well so that they can get the food they need. They need to be paid and they need to be able to access food themselves. Link bigger food businesses to smaller ones to offer support. Improve farmer and small business access to intervention funds when these are available. Fifth, invest in civil society. Call on civil society to ensure that those most in need receive vital assistance. Ensure that they can access finance from national governments and the international community. Six, prioritize food supply. Check prices and availability, both of staple and non-staple foods. Right now, the United Nations suggests that prices of cereals, roots, and tubers are stable, but will this stay the case? And there may be local variations in price. But do monitor the costs and access costs of and access to perishables, 
like vegetables, fruits, pulses, dairy, eggs, fish, and meat. These nutrient-rich foods are scarce due to reduced demand and an inability to move them around. Ensure that food can get from farm to market and to people who really need it, using apps and other techniques if that eases the movement of food from where it is to where it's required. Ensure that also that storage facilities are maintained to avoid food loss and get emergency finance to small and medium enterprises to prevent them from collapse because they're the backbone of food systems everywhere. And then looking ahead, remember that changes to food systems today can have a long-term impact. Focus on choices that generate sustainable and resilient systems to maintain livelihoods. Make sure that they are climate compatible. Keep supply chains short where possible and offer nutritious, safe and healthy foods that are affordable. Be creative, be innovative and be bold in building resilient food systems that are fit for the future we all want and need. In conclusion, COVID-19 is contributing to sickness and death on a vast scale. Prevent it from triggering a hunger and malnutrition crisis among hundreds of millions of people. Prioritize food and nutrition security within all your responses to COVID and act now because every day counts. Procrastination costs lives. I wish you well. Your work is so important. Keep nutrition uppermost in your thinking and the thinking of everybody who's working on the COVID response right now. Thank you.